This three-part video will cover the user guide for the B2 Bomber ADC and DAC now with Dante. Part 1 will cover the basic features, connections, and setup of both units. The next video, Part 2, will discuss Dante installation and setup. The third and final video will take you through Dante clocking. Before you get started, go to burlaudio.com slash register to register your product and to activate the warranty. In the box, you should find your B2 Bomber ADC or DAC, the IEC power cable with four rack screws and washers, as well as this manual. Now I'm going to take you through the B2ADC front panel controls. All the way on the left we have the input level attenuator. What's really important to know about this is that it is post transformer. This allows a quick selection between analog plus 4 dBU equals minus 12, minus 14, minus 16, minus 18, minus 20, and minus 22 dBFS digital headroom. How hard you hit the B2ADC determines the saturation level of the input transformer. The input level attenuator gives you more or less digital headroom. Next we have the dual wire switch. Dual wire is for older legacy equipment that requires two AES cables for left and right. On the B2 bomber, dual wire only works at 176.4 kHz and 192 kHz. Next, we have a high-resolution 30-segment meter which shows RMS, level, and peak simultaneously. The red lock light indicates the unit is clocking correctly. When not lit, the unit is not correctly locked to an external clock. Lock is always lit when on internal clock. When the lock is lost, the unit automatically switches to internal. The peak reset button clears the peak light. Next, we have clock source which can select internal clock, external clock, or Dante. And finally, we have sample rate select. This is for internal clock only. You can manually select sample rates from 44.1 all the way to 192. Now I'm going to go over B2 DAC front panel controls. First, on the left, we have the output level attenuator. This allows for quick selection between analog plus 4 dBU equals minus 18, minus 16, minus 14, minus 12, minus 10, and minus 8 dBFS digital headroom. Input source selects between digital inputs AES1, AES2, Dante, SPDIF, or Toslink. Our high-resolution 30-segment meter shows RMS level and peak simultaneously. The red lock light indicates the unit is clocking correctly. When not lit, the unit is not locked to an external clock. Lock is always lit when on internal clock. When the lock is lost, the unit automatically switches to internal. The peak reset button clears the peak light. Next we have clock source. You can select internal, external or digital in, which can get clock from AES-1, AES-2, Dante, SPDIF, or Toslink. Finally, we have sample rate select for internal clock only. You can manually select sample rates from 44.1 all the way to 192. Now I'm going to talk about the B2 ADC rear unit connections. First, we have the Dante Ethernet output. This is for units with the Dante Brooklyn 2 card installed. Next, we have AES-1 and AES-2. With dual wire off, AES-1 carries digital output for channels left and right. With dual wire on, AES-1 carries the left side of the mix. AES-2 carries digital output for channel left and right with dual wire off. With dual wire on, AES-2 carries the right side of the mix. Next, we have Toslink, which is a SPDIF digital output for channels left and right. And here we have the SPDIF connector digital output for channels left and right. One really cool thing about the B2ADC is if you have dual wire off, you get your signal coming out AES-1, AES-2, 
Toslink, and SPDIF simultaneously. So you can take your mix into four different digital formats. Now, looking at the word clock section, we have two outputs and one input, and the input is isolated from the chassis. Next, we have the analog input trim. This can be adjusted with a small flathead screwdriver. Finally, we have analog XLR input for left and right. Now, I'm going to review the B2 DAC rear unit connections. First, we have the Dante Ethernet input. This is for units with the Dante Brooklyn 2 card installed. Next, we have AES-1 and AES-2. This is digital input for left and right. There is no dual wire support on the B2 DAC. The Toslink input is a SPDIF digital optical input for channels left and right. The SPDIF connection is an RCA style digital SPDIF input for channels left and right. The word clock section has two word clock outs and one word clock in with the input being isolated from the chassis. Next, we have the analog output trim. This can be adjusted with a small flathead screwdriver. And lastly, we have the analog XLR outputs with pin one ground, pin two is hot, and pin three is cold. Getting started with the B2 Bomber DAC. So now, getting started first with the B2 Bomber DAC, we're going to connect analog output left and right. For clocking, I'm going to use word clock, and I'm going to connect the B2 Bomber ADC out to the B2 Bomber DAC in. Now I'm going to connect AES input to AES1 on the DAC. Next, looking at the front of the unit, the first thing I'm going to do is select the input source, AES1, on the DAC. Next, I'm going to set the clock source to external because I'm slaving the B2 DAC off of the B2 ADC. I'm going to set my sample rate at 96, which it already was, and I'm going to set my output level. I like to leave it at minus 18, but you can of course calibrate it down from there. Figure 2 shows the basic B2 Bomber DAC signal path. We start with the DAC chip, which feeds into the attenuator, which is then followed by the B op A1s, our proprietary Class A op amp. On the output, pin 2 is hot, pin 3 is cold, and pin 1 is ground. If you are connecting to an output which is single-ended, make sure to float pin 3. Getting started with the B2 Bomber ADC. Okay, so now connecting the B2 Bomber ADC, the first connection I'm going to make here is analog input in left and in right. As you can see, I've already got word clock connected. So next I'm going to connect AES-1 on the B2 Bomber ADC. You want to make sure you use a 110 ohm AES cable. The next thing I'm going to do is select internal or external, and here in this case I'm going to have the B2 ADC on internal. Now I'm going to set the sample rate on the front panel, and in this case I want 96K. I'm going to select dual wire to off because I want both left and right to go over AES1. Next I'm going to set the input level, and I like to start the ADC on minus 18 as a starting point. This input level comes after the transformer. If you want to get more saturation, you can turn the unit down to minus 20 or minus 22, and then hit the unit that much harder without clipping digitally. Figure 1 on page 6 shows the B2 Bomber ADC basic signal path. On input, pin 2 is hot, pin 3 is cold, and pin 1 is ground. If you have a single-ended connection on the input of the B2 Bomber ADC, you want to make sure to ground pin 3. After input, the first thing we see is the BX1 input transformer, followed by the input level attenuator. This is crucial to understanding how to use the B2 Bomber ADC. Following the input level attenuator, you have the ADC chip. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, go to our website, burlaudio.com, or email info at burlaudio.com.